Steve Patterson here from Photoshop Essentials. In this video, I show you how to add falling snow to your winter photos with Photoshop. This is an update to last year's video where you may have run into performance issues with Photoshop when adding the snow effect to larger images. So this time, I've added one extra step that will keep things running smoothly. I'm using Photoshop 2024 this time, and I'll use the same image from Adobe Stock. In the Layers panel, we see the image on the background layer. First, add a new blank layer above the image by clicking the Add New Layer icon. Then double-click on the new layer's name and rename it Snow. Press Enter or Return on a Mac to accept it. Next, we need to fill the layer with black, so go up to the Edit menu in the menu bar and choose Fill. In the dialog box, set the contents to black, and then click OK. And the image is temporarily hidden from view. To create the snow, we'll start by adding some noise to the layer. So go up to the filter menu, choose Noise, and then add noise. In the dialog box, make sure that Gaussian and monochromatic are both selected. Then set the amount to around 25% and click OK and Photoshop fills the layer with noise. Now, the noise will eventually become our snow effect, but one problem is that it's too small. So let's scale it by going up to the Edit menu, choosing Transform, and then Scale. In the Options bar, make sure the Link icon between the Width and Height fields is selected. Then change the Width to 400%. The height will change to 400% as well. Click the check mark to accept it, and the noise is starting to look more like snow. But here's what could cause performance issues with Photoshop if you're working with a larger image. Since we scaled the width and height of the noise layer by 400%, our document size is now that much bigger. Notice in the Properties panel that my document's width is now 10,800 pixels and the height is almost 7,200 pixels. And this could cause problems when we start applying filters to the noise because Photoshop could run out of memory. The good news is we don't need all of that extra space, so we can just crop it away. To do that, go up to the Select menu and choose All. Then go up to the Image menu and choose Crop. Go back to the Select menu and choose Deselect. And now our document is back to its original size, and we can start adding some filters. But before we do, let's convert the snow layer into a smart object. So the filters will be applied as smart filters, which means we can go back and change their settings if we need to. So with the snow layer selected, click the Layers Panel menu icon and choose Convert to Smart Object. And a Smart Object icon appears in the lower right of the thumbnail. To blend the noise with the image, change the blend mode of the smart object from normal to screen. This hides the black areas on the layer and leaves only the white noise visible. Then to make the snow look like it's falling, go up to the filter menu, choose blur, and then motion blur. In the dialog box, set the angle to the direction you want the snow to be falling from. I've set mine to negative 65 degrees, so it's falling from the upper left. Then adjust the amount of motion using the distance slider. Don't set it too high or the snow will look more like rain. Lower values work better, so I'll set mine to 10 pixels. Then click OK to close the dialog box. In the Layers panel, we see that the Motion Blur filter was applied as a smart filter, which means you can double-click on its name to reopen the dialog box if you want to try different settings. But I'll just click Cancel to close it. Also in the Layers panel, we have a new Filter Mask, which is that white thumbnail that's taking up a lot of space. We don't need the Filter Mask for this effect, so let's delete the mask by right-clicking on it and choosing Delete Filter Mask. Next, we'll reduce the amount of snow and brighten the snow at the same time. Go up to the Image menu, Choose Adjustments, and then Levels. 
To reduce the number of snowflakes, click on the black point slider below the left side of the histogram and begin dragging it to the right. As you drag, you'll see the darker snowflakes begin to disappear, leaving only the brighter flakes visible. Then to brighten the remaining snowflakes, click on the white point slider and drag it to the left. You can toggle the preview on and off to see the effect with and without the adjustment, and when you're done, click OK to close the dialog box. Back in the Layers panel, notice that even though Levels is an image adjustment, not a filter, Photoshop still applied it as a smart filter, which means you can double-click on its name to reopen the dialog box and change the settings. But I'm happy with how things look. So at this point, we have our initial snow effect. But let's add some depth to it by adding a second snow layer, this time with larger flakes so they'll look like they were closer to the camera. In the Layers panel, make a copy of the Snow Smart Object by dragging it down onto the New Layer icon. The copy appears above the original, along with a copy of our Smart Filters so we don't need to reapply them. Then let's rotate the copy so the new snowflakes are not just sitting on top of the originals by going up to the Edit menu, down to Transform, and choosing Rotate 180 degrees. To make these snowflakes larger than the originals, go up to the Filter menu, down to Pixelate, and choose Crystallize. Increase the cell size at the bottom to somewhere between 10 and 20. I'll go with 15. Then click OK to close the dialog box. If the flakes look too big or not big enough, just double click on the Crystallize Smart Filter and try a different setting. But I'll click Cancel. The only problem with these larger flakes is that they don't have any motion applied. So go back to the Filter menu, back to Blur, and once again choose Motion Blur. Leave the angle the same so the snow is falling in the same direction, but because these flakes are bigger, increase the distance to around 20 pixels. Then click OK. Finally, let's reduce and brighten these larger flakes by adding one more Levels Adjustment. Go back to the Image menu, back to Adjustments, and choose Levels. Then, just like we did before, drag the black point slider to the right to reduce the number of flakes, then drag the white point slider to the left to brighten the ones that remain. Toggle the preview on and off to see the effect before and after the adjustment, and then click OK to close the dialog box. At this point, the snow effect is done. But I'm going to quickly clean up my Layers panel by placing both of my snow layers into a layer group. Since the top one is already selected, I'll hold Shift on my keyboard and click to add the bottom one. Then I'll click the Layers panel menu icon and choose New Group from Layers. I'll name the group Snow and click OK. And now I can toggle the group open if I want to see the layers inside it, I can turn the group off to see the original image, and I can turn the group back on to view the image with the falling snow. And there we have it. That's how to add falling snow to your winter photos with Photoshop. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my channel to learn more about Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Steve Patterson from Photoshop Essentials.